Hey everyone, it is Foul Play here, back for another Modern League, uh, with, with Bogles, of course. Uh, looks like we won the die roll here, we're gonna be on the play. Uh, Faki 7? Faki 7? Alright, hand looks like a pretty decent keep to me. Got Leyline Protection, uh, we got Totem Armor, we got Vigilance. All of this seems pretty strong, hit our second mana, jam that lifelink. <clears throat> really, really high reward hand here, um, just for hitting that second white mana source. <clears throat> yeah, so if you didn't watch them, uh, games games one and two. Uh, game two we had a win against a uh, bit of an interesting brew. It was... Uh, I thought it was like a scapeshift deck, but it wasn't. It was like a... A land value deck they explored into having you know their blast zones and their um, engineered explosives for creature removal. The Dryad of Lysian Grove, Steve, Tylus Tracker, some uh, four mana zombie um, that did uh, every time Swamp entered they either drained us for two or drew a card and lost a life. So opponents cast Force of Negation here. Frantic Inventory. All right. So we're just getting in for one. Uh, looks like we uh, didn't draw that land. We drew the Ethereal Armor instead. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, looks like a blue-white control deck to me at the moment. Um, opt Force of Negation. Frantic Inventory. I think we can uh, probably expect something like a Mana Leak here. Oh man, resolving this is heaps bad because we still get blown out by a Snapcaster Mage. Alright, well they're mana leaking it, so that's fine. Um, we're, we're in like super dead spot here because Leyline doesn't do anything, especially without um, Ethereal Armor. And we haven't dropped two auras a turn here, so we're in so much trouble right now. Um, yeah, yeah, this is going to be a rough one. <clears throat> Sure, I'm fine with that. Shuffle away my non-creature spells. Shuffle away my non-land cards. I like it. <laughs> nobody, nobody bring up the math here. Alright, Oblivion Ring is a nice dead draw. Alright, this is only really worse against Spell Pierce. Let's go for the Hyena Umbra here. We can cast Sentinel's Eyes out the graveyard, but they're gearing up for a Supreme Verdict next turn, so best to get that Ethereal Armor happening. Sorry, the um, Totem Armor happening. Uh, we still probably just don't win this match. They'd, they'd have to do nothing for a very long time for us to actually get there. <clears throat> Teferi, Bounce, Hyena, Umbra? Sure. Holy moly. Alright, we might as well kill uh, Teferi while we can so they don't get their stupid Teferi doing stuff. Um, Field of Rune again. Big Teferi. Okay. Whatever. I don't care about Big Tef. I guess I'll start caring about it soon, but... Yeah. Uh, against Burn or something, we, we might have been okay, but against a blue-white control deck, missing, what, five land drops here now? Alright. Uh, I'm just gonna concede. Um, we're, we're not getting there. It's... There's no point. There's literally no point. We're just so freaking flooded. Alright, so I really like the idea of Rest in Peace and Gadok Teague into this matchup. We are bringing in a lot of two mana cards. I might, uh, three Rest in Peace is probably enough, so I might take one out and I might take out a Grisfern. Loses value because of their Shark Typhoon. Um,. Yeah, this seems fine. We, we can bring in Oblivion Ring to deal with... Uh, I guess it deals with a token permanently. Um, Path would do that as well, though. I don't really think I want to fight their tokens with removal. Could destroy... Uh, remove a Planeswalker. Um, but then as soon as they remove it, then Planeswalker comes back. So that's not great. Um, yeah, this seems fine. Whole bunch of hate cards. Six hate cards coming in at their face. <clears throat> Ready to be all kinds of rude there. 
All right, so in these matchups, I don't want to see too many two converted mana cost cards. I think uh, this is pretty borderline. You could keep it, but we run that risk of uh, land drop into lose. I think we can mulligan this one. All right, this looks way better. I'm going to keep it. We at least have our second land drop. We have the same number of auras. We have a hate card. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have totem armor yet, but uh, early days, early days. So we'll lead on our temple garden here. Leave this uh, fetch land. If we draw another land, we might want to leave that fetch land for a dried arbor after a wrath. Not a bad draw. Um, here we definitely want to shock in um, our land. Uh, Field of Ruin, we don't want to get color screwed later on. So we might as well just pay the life now to not get color screwed later. a pretty good one um, not really sure what the best thing to resolve is I think uh, I just attack for now and maybe I even pass the turn because if they're holding up mana leak they just get completely tempoed and we don't lose a card and that's only worse if they have opt which they didn't do turn one so I think it's actually okay here just passing the turn alright there's the opt we're looking for a bottom off that opt. Alright, they topped with opt. That's very sad. <clears throat> Rancor seems decent, but I'm just holding up mana. If we cast our Rest in Peace and they Supreme Verdict, we don't get any of our cards back, which is bad. I think I want to at least get my Rancor back before I cast Rest in Peace. And they'll be tapped out next turn if they do that anyway. Um, we still have been clocking them for a decent amount. I could run Daybreak Coronet into like an Archmage's Charm there. Um, but I might as well not do that. Guess we're also at the stage where we want to resolve this Gadok Teague as well to protect against Terminus and uh, Supreme Verdict uh, against Big Teferi. Alright, there's the Mystic Sanctuary. Getting back that opt. Okay. Does that mean they're a Terminus deck? Clean up. They gotta discard something. All right, they just got Path to Exile. I think we uh, we look to play Rancor here, attack and put them to one, and then we can play our Rest in Peace post combat. If these were one mana cards in my hand, I probably would just have emptied my hand by now and. Our opponent would probably be closer to dead. Um, but I don't want to spend two mana to get countered for two mana. Um, and I, I think I've had pretty decent reasons for not doing that so far this game. So they're thinking about whether or not they want to counter this. Um, or tap draw. It looks like they wanted to counter it. So here now we can cast Rest in Peace. Exile this Cryptic Command. And then Mystic Sanctuary shenanigans will be offline now. They got Force of Negation though. I guess if they're stalling, they probably have Force of Negation. Alright, that resolves. Cool. Good, good, good. Decent draw. Uh, I guess I could play Coronet and win, but 
I have a feeling like they're going to try and interact somehow. Oh, maybe it's a Shock Typhoon. Alright, I think potentially we got lucky there. Um, we might as well try and cast this uh, Daybreak Coroner. If they've got a counter spell, they'll use it most likely. Of course, if we counter that, uh, if we cast that pre combat, they'd just be dead. Um, but I didn't want to get Cryptic tapped. Maybe it's worth going for. Um, I tend to not like playing into that though. So they countered and then cast an Archmage's Charm. Sure. Wouldn't uh, Manatide be a blowout there for them on that Archmage's Charm? I'm sure, they'd be very not happy about that. Their hand is full of cards, though, so uh, we're not out of the woods yet. All right, Teferi, whatever. <laughs> yes, they bounce Rancor and then look to counter it. Bounce Grispoon. So have they got the Snapcaster Mage then? Hmm. In the context of our hand, Windswept Teeth is pretty decent. I should have played actually my Windswept Teeth because if they have Mana Lake, alright, they have Force of Negation. So now my read is Snapcaster Mage. So we're going to attack, put them to one, and then we're going to empty our hand. Yeah. Alright, so not the most efficient way for our opponent to use all their spells here, but. Uh, they're not getting a huge amount of value out of any of it there. Um, let's uh, cast Gadok Tig and get a Dried Arbor. Now, if they had Supreme Verdict, they would have jammed it already. Um, so we just go Bogle Pass, and then we're only dead if they have Path in hand and draw Supreme Verdict or Terminus. Alright, cool, so we get the win there. Uh, game 3. <clears throat> Let's bring back in the Grispoon over a Daybreak. Um... Like, Daybreak is great, especially now that they've got the Shark Typhoon. But I think... I think lowering the curve slightly is probably more important. And I could bring in this fourth Rest in Peace. Yeah, I might bring in the fourth for a Core Spirit Dancer. Let's see how we go. Got a fair few uh, two drops in our deck at the moment now. An extra six that we've boarded in. I guess we. What we bought out? Leyline, a core spirit dancer, and a coronet. Alright. So we didn't upset the curve too much. Uh, if I knew Greyland was on top, I would keep this so hard. Um, I have to throw it though. Alright, this one's pretty good. We're going to keep it. Might throw the planes? No. We've got two totem armor effects, so I think throwing the creature is probably fine because we can cycle these horizon canopies. Turn one, Mystic Sanctuary, and pass. Yep, that seems good to me. Rest in peace, awesome draw. Play Spider Umbra. If they've got a counter spell, they'll look to cast it because Totem Arm is very good against them, assuming they're the Supreme Verdict and not Terminus build. Um, even then, they can sideboard in Engineered Explosives as well. Alright, so there's the Mana Leak. We can't pay for it. Now, Hyena Umbra, we get the first strike, which is better than the Reach here. They could Force of Negation here as well. 
Looks like they're considering it or they're just not happy to see a second aura or a second uh, totem arm aura. All right. There's the uh, this 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 second counter spell on turn two. Uh, Force is so OP, man. Force is so bloomin' OP. It's not a bad one. So we're attacking into potentially a Snapcaster Mage chump block here. I, I just read Mana Leak, so I'm going to just hold off on doing anything here. I could cast the Rest in Peace, trying to resolve Core Spirit Dancer in this next turn. Oh wow, they're land screwed. So I'm going to expect Rest in Peace to get countered and then look to cast Core Spirit Dancer. Spell Snare. Have they got double Spell Snare? That would suck. I mean, they could just have Path as well. <coughs> Alright, Spirit Dancer's resolved. Perfect creature to help rebuild our board. Control decks hate this card. <laughs> Opt. Alright. Uh, they bottom with the opt. No terminus revealed. No land for turn. And uh, look, here comes the here comes the card draw. I could go in on Core Spirit Dancer here. Uh, maybe it's smarter. If I draw another aura, I might start going in on Core Spirit Dancer. Uh, we draw Gadok Teague instead. Uh, so yeah, attack for two. Uh, we'll cast our Teague. It's only worse if they have Spell Snare, but they would have had to have drawn it off of, I guess, the draw for turn or the opt. Um, they can still cast 3 mana to Fairy and bounce it. We might as well just empty our hand here. We got protection against Terminus anyway. Um, if they flip Terminus off the top, they would need to have white mana for Path to Exile as well. Uh, Alright, well there's a Path on Core Spirit Dancer. Rancor seems decent. Uh, yeah, I can cycle this. Decent as well. They might spell pierce this. Force of negation, pitching mystical dispute, sure. So we still attack for five, uh, put our opponent to seven, and any aura off the top of our library plus the hyena umbra um, is lethal. So it's pretty decent. They missed another land drop. Wow, my opponent is like Bogle's level unlucky here. Uh, slightly better putting this on the scout. We put our opponent to one. Turn off all their fetch lands for the remainder of the game. Uh, and all their shock lands as well. And Ether Gust on the Gadok Teague. Seems like a decent top. So we put them to four. That's not quite dead instead. Um, sorry, put them to three. Um, next turn we draw Gadok Teague. They've missed land again. Wow. Wow. So we just attack for lethal. Their play is, I guess, Snapcaster Mage or another Ether Gust. But it has to pretty much be Snapcaster Mage. Alright, so we just get the win. Cool. Uh, that was very not eventful at all. <laughs> uh, I think we we're very, very fortunate to win that one. Um, yeah, just 
drawing too many uh, too many cards with the converted mana cost of two, but at the same time, they were all really good cards as well. Um, probably, I reckon my biggest misplay was game three, putting the Rancor on the Bogle, sorry, it was this Spider Umbra on the Bogle instead of the Core Spirit Dancer. If I put it on Core Spirit Dancer, I get extra damage across. Um, yes, it's only worth if they have worse if they have Path, but the reward is, you know, I'm dealing three damage with that Spider Umbra instead of one damage with it, um, which would have sped up the clock. I think they had the Path and they cast it in the following turn, so maybe they drew the Path uh, on the next turn. Um, but yeah. We were, we were pretty fortunate that game. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for daily Boogles content and ring that bell for notifications every time a new video goes live. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.